This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Makes me feel hollow at the center. Mom has only one white service uniform and will need to wear it again for her next shift later in the week. I know how hard my mother works to keep us afloat, and I have already begun looking for ways to help her. Every day during the school year, Mom leaves two quarters on the table for Roy and me to buy lunch. A couple of times a month, she adds a dime for each of us. Roy always spends his dime, but I drop mine into the slot of a metal baseball piggy bank that Mom gave me. It is a cheap thing she picked up for a few cents, but I treasure it. In the evening before bed, I shake it, pleased by the jingle of coins. Some nights, I open the piggy bank and arrange the dimes in ever-lengthening rows on the floor, enjoying the simple fact of them. One evening, a few weeks before, I shook my piggy bank, anticipating its jingle, but it made no sound. I had to buy food, Mom explained when she arrived home later that night. Where my saved coins had been, there was now only the heaviness of a regret. It chased my own disappointment away instantly. It had taken me many months to save those coins, but I understood that Mom needed them. A few days later, she pressed a new coin in my palm. She folded my fist around it, smiling at me ruefully. The cool metal in my hand felt like a kind of promise as I pulled my piggy bank from under the bed and dropped the dime into its slot. Hearing his lonely clink, I knew there was nothing else to do but to begin saving again. Now I rinse Mom's uniform and hang it to dry on a communal line in the yard. By the time I get back to our room, Mom and Roy are both snoring softly. I sleep fitfully that night, alert to Mom's every movement and sigh. I'm half awake when she rises before daybreak as usual, dresses quietly so as not to disturb us, and leaves for her day job at the newspaper. After she's gone, I lie there, staring into the darkness. Beside me, Roy rolls onto his back and softly exhales. Even at that young age, I knew that there was no safety net to catch us should anything happen to our mother. Two years earlier, she had fled her unhappy marriage and brought us to Hawaii. We'd had to leave my three-year-old brother Wayne behind in Japan with my beloved maternal grandparents. He was too young to go to school, and there would be no one to take care of him while Mom worked. Wayne and my grandparents would be joining us soon, but in the meantime, our mother was all we had. A single parent, she worked two jobs for low wages, and if she couldn't work, we didn't eat. There was no question of her seeing a doctor as we had no money for that and no health coverage. That childhood insecurity shaped the woman and the public servant I would become. It helped fuel my desire to study law and to position myself in rooms where I could advocate for those who were as vulnerable as our family had once been, as I had once felt. When, as a state legislator, I helped to pass laws that ensured safer working conditions and expanded health care coverage for Hawaii's families, I thought of my mother. When I advocated for public schools to have the resources they needed to serve all different types of learners, I thought of the teachers who had made a difference in my life and those who hadn't been able to help wane. And when... As a U.S. Senator, I vociferously opposed the Trump administration's cruel and devastating family separation policy. I thought again of my brother Wayne, who would carry the scars of a much gentler separation for the entirety of his tragically short life. I have now spent five decades fighting for my constituents, while also navigating old boy networks in the staterooms of Hawaii and in the House and Senate chambers of Washington, D.C., creating a place for myself in political arenas dominated by men. For the vast majority of that time, I strove to be polite and civil, even as I fought tenaciously 
for the causes I believed in. From my earliest days in the Hawaii legislature, I schooled myself to bite back the snappy...